Hi, and welcome to part two of the Paramedic Cardiology Electrophysiology lecture series that I'm doing. Um, in this one, we're going to be talking about electrical flow through the heart. So in the fundamentals, we talked about what cells are. In part one, we talked about uh, the ions that are in cells and how they move back and forth between the cells. And in this part, which is a relatively quick lecture, we're going to be talking about how that, how how these pieces of meat sitting inside of our chest can create electricity. How does that happen? You've probably never touched a steak and got an electric charge off it, but that's what our hearts do. They create electricity and we can see that electricity on the surface of our body by using an ECG. So what is that all about? That's what we're going to be talking about in this lecture. First one we talked about moving through the membrane. This one is electrical flow in the heart. Here are your priming questions. Here are the questions for you to think about as we go through this lecture. What is electricity? What, what even is that stuff? It's all around us. Do you understand what electricity actually is? Because explaining how our heart creates electricity is going to be kind of difficult if you don't even know what electricity is. So let's talk about what electricity is. Answer that question. And then how does our heart make that stuff? How does it do it so that this piece of meat is creating electricity? And specifically, when you're explaining how our heart makes electricity, I want you to talk about the ions. Because remember, it all comes down to the ions. If you can explain the ions, then you understand what's going on. So talk to me about ions and talk to me about these things called gap junctions. Can you explain how that works? So let's talk about electrical flow in the heart. Now we've set this up before. We have our heart or our cell, the blue thing, and we have the outside of the cell. And I've told you that there's more sodium outside the cell <clears throat> than there is potassium. And there's more potassium inside the cell than there is sodium. There are also some other things inside the cell. <clears throat> so there are things like um, proteins, for example. Proteins are trapped inside the cell and proteins are negatively charged. So when we go in with very, very, very small electrical meters and we test the heart, what we find is that the inside of the heart is more negatively charged than the outside of the heart. So if you want to think about it this way, inside is negative, outside is positive. Again, I'm a very figurative thinker. I, I'm not very um, concrete. So I can't remember things like that. So the way I remember it is that cells inside the heart are depressed. They're down. They're negative. They're in this beautiful, positive environment, but they just walk around really depressed, really down, really negative. So think about that. Heart cells are downers, and they're downers because of all the negative stuff that's trapped inside them. I'm a heart cell. I'm negative. Think about it that way. So how do we change that? How do we change it so that the negative is on the outside and the positive is on the inside? And why? Why do we care? Well, this is the answer. This is electricity. Electricity is the movement of charged particles. So when you have electrically charged particles, usually we talk about this with electrons, and they're going through a medium, that's electricity. If I take um, <clears throat> an electron in one part of the water and I move it to another part of the water, that's electricity. If I have a copper wire and I have electrons in the copper wire and I push the electrons through the copper wire, copper wire flows, pretty, electrons flow pretty easily through copper wire and I get a flow and that is an electrical current, an electrical flow. If I take a, a, a wire that's very difficult for electrons to move through, and I push the electrons through with a lot of force, I really like force those electrons through that wire, there's gonna be so much friction that eventually you'll feel the heat of it moving through. And if I kept going, it'll glow really bright because of the friction. And of course, with the oxygen around, it'll burn up. So if I don't want it to burn up, I can put it into a little glass sphere and take all the oxygen out of there, create a vacuum or put some inert gases in there 
so that when the electrons flow through that wire and it glows bright hot, it doesn't burn up. And that, my friends, is how a light bulb works. That's what we do with light bulbs. We create electrical flow through a wire in an environment that doesn't allow the wire to burn, and that's electricity. It's just the flow of electrons. So when the meat inside of our chest takes sodium and potassium and calcium and moves some of them from the inside to the cell to the outside of the cell, that's electricity. That's what electricity is. So when we change the polarity, polarity meaning, you know, on either side, extreme sides. So normally cardiac cells, very negative on the inside. If we switch that around and make them positive on the outside, or positive on the inside, negative on the outside, we've changed their polarity, that movement of the ions is electricity. So taking the heart cell, which is negative on the inside, moving the ions around so it becomes positive on the inside, is electrical flow. That's what electricity is. So to make that electricity, we have to move the sodium in and we have to move the potassium out. And we've already talked about the uh, voltage gated channels and we've talked about the active transport pumps and we've talked about the exchangers. So you know how we do this. You know how we can make that electrical activity happen. Now I haven't described fully how it gets going, but you can imagine we've got the mechanisms for it. We just get the bouncers throwing people in and out. We get the rotating doors moving and we open up the other channels so that they can move back and forth. And somehow, which I'll explain, it all gets coordinated and we end up changing the inside of the cell from a negative to a positive by letting a whole bunch of positive things in. Okay, so when that changes, it doesn't happen all at once throughout the entire cell. What happens instead is something will stimulate the cell here so that you've got the, uh, here we've got our yellow, which is the sodium on the outside, and our purple, which is the potassium on the inside. This is how our cell is normally lined up, right? Sodium on the outside, potassium on the inside. I trigger something at this point in the cell, and when I trigger it, this channel opens and the sodium, which is really concentrated out here, goes, hey, there's a lot of room for sodium on the inside, and it goes inside. And the potassium, which says, man, there's a lot of room out there for potassium because it's crowded in here, goes to the outside. And the sodium and the potassium switch. So I've just switched this, and that creates a little bit of electrical charge. Now remember, what is it that opens up the gated channels for sodium and potassium. It's voltage. Voltage is electricity. It's the movement of ions. So somehow, which I won't describe yet, this first um, domino started to fall and I switched the sodium and the potassium. That creates an electrical charge. The electrical charge opens up the sodium channel and then the, the um, potassium channel beside it and they switch and that stimulates the next one, and they switch, and that stimulates the next one, and they switch. And you start to get this electrical flow across the membrane of the heart, traveling across. So the electricity starts the process, and then like dominoes falling, we get them going across the heart, flowing through the heart. So if we get a flow through a cell, zip, off they go, once it hits the end of the cell, it's just going to stop unless there's a way to continue that electrical flow from one cell to another cell. Unfortunately, there is. Otherwise, we'd all be dead. And the way that happens is by something called a gap junction. So there's a junction between the gap of these two cells. And this gap junction sits here and allows for sodium to travel through. So when the depolarization wave hits the end of the cell, it goes through those gap junctions by allowing sodium to flow through. Sodium has a charge. That electrical charge comes through because it's an ion moving and it stimulates the voltage gated channels in the next cell and off it goes. So you can see how the, the, the electrical flow, once it gets started through as yet mysterious means, once it gets started at one point, it flows across the cell and then jumps through the gap junctions to the next cell. 
And that's the process that we start to see. We see all of this sodium rushing into the cell, going through the sodium channels, rushing in, jumping through the gap junctions, stimulating these channels, sodium rushes in, going through and off it goes from one cell to the next to the next. So if you think about this, and sometimes when I'm teaching this in class, I get a whole bunch of students to stand in a line. You get like 10 students standing in a line and you tell them to sloop over like they're a cardiac cell and they're all depressed on the inside. And they're standing all there. People usually laugh. It's a fun thing to do. If you're doing workshops explaining this, feel free to use this. So they stand there and uh, they're depressed. And then I walk up and I hug the first student and they smile, they get positive. And they turn and they hug the next student and that student stands up and they smile and they're positive. And then it goes on and on and on and on. And we're conducting that hug through the students. Same thing happens in the heart. If you line up a bunch of cardiac cells that are all negative and you stimulate the first one somehow through mysterious means, it gets positive. And then it charges off the next one going through the gap junctions and we get this flow, an electrical flow going through the cells of the heart, stimulating the next one, stimulating the next one, stimulating the next one. Remember, all electricity is, is the movement of ions. And in this case, we're bringing it back to the ions. In this case, the ions are sodium and potassium moving back and forth. So as the sodium and potassium moves through the medium, through the cell wall, in a progressive organized manner, that is electrical flow. And of course, in our heart, our heart is just like a big clump of cells, right? It's not a linear thing of one cell after the other after the other. So when we depolarize our cell, we our heart rather, we usually start in one part and that wave of positive depolarization goes across the heart, usually from one part up in the upper right hand part of the heart. If you've already studied the um, sinoatrial node, you know that this part up here is the sinoatrial node, which stimulates as it goes through all the way down through the heart. And we get this electrical flow from the SA node in the top right part of the heart down into the bottom of the, the ventricles. So that electrical flow, I'm going to just going to do that again because it took me a long time to make that thing. It took me about a day to make this animation like 10 years ago. So we something fires off, the SA node fires off, and it creates this positive wave of depolarization in a relatively organized manner down through the heart. Like if you think of soccer fans doing the wave in, uh, in the stands as they're watching the game, that's basically what your heart is doing. Think of the soccer fan sitting down as really negative and the one standing up is really positive and the flow moves across. That's how your heart conducts an electrical flow. Kind of cool. That's how we take a piece of meat and we create electricity. And what we're going to talk about next is what that electricity actually does inside the heart. Because if you're just, you know, depolarizing, who cares? You're not getting anything done. You're just doing a lot of work for nothing. So that'll be in the next lecture. If you've got any questions, leave them below and I'll keep monitoring to see if anybody has questions that I can answer.